We are on, and our guest today is Mr. Mike Cater, the former C Yonkers City Council President. We've been trying to have this interview going for a while, for about two or three weeks. But you know, guys, sometimes life throws you some curves. We have other priorities that at the moment uh, we might not be aware of them. And we had to, to postpone it. We never canceled it. We postponed it. But what really matters is that we are here today. Mr. Mike Cater is there. Ru Ross from Yonkers Voice is here. Mike, thank you. Thank you for taking the time, and thank you for make, helping us making this happen. Oh, absolutely, Ben. It's great to be back here with you. It's been some time. Hello, Yonkers, uh, Yonkers Voice family. It's great to be here. It's been a while. And like you said, sometimes that pesky thing called life and, and calendars and schedules and summertime uh, obligations. But like you said, we're here now, and let's rock and roll. Now, uh, Mike, I, if I rewind the, the tape of life a few years, I remember that very first day I saw you. It was at the YWCA. Before you were elected, we spoke briefly. Then you ran. Then you became the council president. Then you were the very first person that sat down with me for a live interview in your office. After that, then the demand kept coming. But thank you. I appreciate that chance that you gave me. No, no, absolutely. Uh, but I actually remember that. It was the rallies at the Y where the firefighters were in Southwest Yonkers concerning the firehouse and how it was important, particularly around that time. I think there were some major fires, and I wanted to go uh, and to see and hear the issues. And that's where I said, oh, that's the Yonkers voice guy. You know, you know he does exist. And I think that's where we first met and, and our relationship developed. But more importantly, I recognized the value of social media and I recognized the value of Yonkers voice and the information you put out to the followers. And I said, this is a great way to connect with your followers, keep them informed. When we did that first meeting, I, I, I do got to say, I was a little nervous because, you know, you know what's out there, the fake profiles and bullying and, you know, the unexpected. But um, I think it was a success. We created a trend. And now, you know, Yonkers Voice is the first place people go to to be interviewed. As I the great work. So as I always tell, Yonkers Voice is not my voice. Yonkers Voice is the platform where the voice of the people is heard. Okay? So, but all this is happening, Mike, because of our followers. Our, our you know, people that follow us, people that respect us for what we do. We at Yonkers Voice refuse to engage in the nonsense in the slander, uh, accusations, uh, stalking. I don't think the people of Yonkers care about that. What they care about is this, you know. You know, you know Ben, you have, I'm not even sure what the total number of followers are, and, and people go to you for, you know, live information and for postings and stuff, but you also got to, and this is something that I learned early on, you can't make everyone happy all the time. Every post you put up, every video you put up, Always remember, and, and this is in life, particularly when you make decisions. Somebody's going to like it, somebody's not going to like it. And you could put that basic formula to life. Business decisions, family decisions, marital decisions. You know, I think it was Abraham Lincoln that said, you know, uh, you, know you, you can't make all the people happy all the time. And this comes with the territory, but that lets you know they're attacking you, they're harassing you. You're doing something right. Keep it going. I, I, I agree with you. You know, in my immediate family, it's half a dozen of us. And I have a hard time keeping them all happy. I can't. So I Don't gave... Talk to me about big families. <laughs> yeah, and, and I have a small family, and I cannot keep them all happy. So now imagine a family, a Yonkers Voice family, with thousands and thousands and thousands of followers, because we have 33 pages. And each page might have 60,000, 50,000. Facebook has about uh, 40,000. Instagram, 20,000. So if I cannot keep six of us in my immediate family happy, it's an impossible task. You know, and, and it's, an, it's very valuable to recognize that early on, the way I did early on. And, you know, it's always important that, you know, Yonka's voice, just like any other person, stay true to their values, stay true to what their focus is and why they intended to do this early. So whenever in doubt, keep it, as they taught in the military, keep it silly stupid. 
why did you first start doing this? When things get complicated, and you usually when you step back and you look at what was the goal? That's a formula that I try using. Mike, have you all these years that we've been interviewing you and uh, many political figures, have you ever paid us for any, any interview whatsoever? And if you did, please just tell us the no, fee because you owe me some money because yeah, I didn't get a check. No, no, you know, I'm just laughing and it's not how to, you know, the, to me, the question is almost a little comical. Ben, as much as I see the value in social media, which I just said a while ago, I would never pay you or anyone else for an interview. Neither Mr. Kader paid us, neither any of the other candidates paid us for the sit-down, for the interview. We do this for you. We do this because we feel that whatever they need to say needs to be heard. And they need to be heard by whom? Not by me, by you. That's why we do this. Now, if somebody runs a campaign ad, Yes, they pay because it's a service that we provide. This is a public service that we provide for you. So that is never a fee. So regardless of what you hear out there, those are lies. Those are people that try to slander, cause trouble, cause fiction in order to get traction to their own page. If you have a question, you can ask me. Okay? Now, guys, this interview, this one, and other interviews that we do, we don't do it for us, we do it for you. We want you to get involved. We want you to, to ask questions. We want you to learn and formulate your own opinions based on your own experiences. So whatever you need to ask, ask. But keep in mind, if you come and ask unpolite, rude, use vulgarity, or try to harass my guests, I'm not going to remove my guests from my page. I'm going to remove you. Okay, so present your question. We don't have any issues with disagreements. We have no issues with difference of opinions. The only issue that we have is with disrespect. I strongly feel that for me to disagree with you, I don't need to disrespect you. We can challenge, we can talk, we can ask questions, we can debate. But the respect between you and I, me and my guests, my guest and you, you and my guest, do not need to be disrespectful in order for your point to come across. So I think I'm very clear on how I do things. I've been doing the same thing for the last 17 years. I think everybody knows. So feel free to engage, but remember our basic rules. Once again, Yonkers Voice does not endorse any candidate. We inform our audience of what's going on. Let's move on into something else. We got all those disclaimers out of the Exactly. Way. It's yeah. out of the way. So hopefully people understand. Now let's talk about things that, uh, why we're here. I have a radar. Okay. Sometimes, I don't know if you noticed uh, a white van across from your office. With that big satellite dish? That is correct. That's so you. I guess you okay. didn't notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, now we're going to start a whole bunch of rumor tonight. Okay. Oh, more than the radar. Yeah, more than <laughs> So uh, that is a zoom zoom mic. Okay, and we need to clear things out. Let's start first with your uh, political future. We have spoken a few times about that, about many years ago now, and I know that uh, you love to serve the people. I think it's within you. Okay, and uh, what's the future in public life for Mike Cato? You know, you know uh, Ben, thank you for that segue. Uh, I, I've said it before, and I'm going to repeat it. Public service is a privilege that shouldn't be given to anyone so easily. You know, I was fortunate to serve this country in the Central Intelligence Agency, and I was blessed to be voted uh, by the residents of Yonkers as the City Council President, no longer in office. But I feel that my time in public service is not done yet. And for that reason, I'll be exploring all options or in the immediate future. Now, Mike, listen, uh, uh, lots of people don't understand how difficult it is. Yes, you have that drive within you that you want to do public service, but it's a juggle between serving the people, family, small kids growing up. It's not an easy task. No. 
tell us how you manage. How is your family reacting? Are they? I'm sure that uh, the wife might be supportive of uh, of you. My wife is supportive of me, but that doesn't mean that they're happy. But maybe they understand. Just tell us because I want to know the man a little bit of the man. What's involved in those decisions? You, you know, Ben. You know, a lot of times some people, when I particularly when I speak to my friends in labor and. And, and a lot of my supporters, and I'm in constant contact with them, and they're very supportive. You know, I know where they want me to run, but they'll be supportive of any office that I that I seek. But more importantly, I recognized early on, being new to politics, even though my name is on the ballot, my family is also affected by my decisions. I've been blessed, you know, and I and and, and she's right here, right now. I'm sorry to put you on. You know, you know, my wife um, has been my crutch, my backbone, you know, a shoulder, you know, to, to, to celebrate our ups, you know, you know, to grieve for our downs. And her and my children must be and will be part of that important decision. You know, we're constantly discussing the time commitment to do the job is not the question. I know I could lead. I have shown that I could lead. But it's the sacrifices that come with it. I have three young children that need their father. I have a young son that's receiving services. Uh, I have elderly parents. There's a lot of sacrifice that comes in there. And if I didn't think about it thoroughly and surely and get my family's input, I would be doing a disservice to myself, and I'll be doing a disservice to the residents of Yonkers that need honest leadership. Now, Mike, as you know, we are doing this live. There is people watching, and guys, before somebody starts criticizing about uh, me be typing, why are you disrespectful to your guest, I want to explain that as we do in the interview, there is people commenting, so I'm monitoring in order to see what the questions are, so I can ask uh, Mr. Cater. So it's not a sign of disrespect, it's just that I'm multitasking. I can do that. That is a question, I think it's a valid question, from a concerned Yonkers Democrats. It is undisputed that Mr. Cater lost his election, loopside election results. Does Mr. Cater realistically believe that the voters will get him, will get him back in? I run to win, you know, and let, let me just backtrack. There was, I'm a football fan, if anyone remembers, Herm Edwards, you know, he used to be the jet, uh, the coach of the New York Jets, and there was one time where there was a pre-game, a post-game conference, and he said it, so it was a great soundbite, you play to win. So, you know, I appreciate that question from the con you know, concerned Democrats, you know, if I run, it's not a ploy, it's not a tactic, it's to win and lead the state. Now you have another comment from Angelique Pinwiski. My man. friend, your friend, Angelique, I will see you in two weeks. Peace and love, Angelique. How are Nothing you? but peace and love. Beautiful person. Angelique says, Mike is a truly wonderful, knowledgeable person who cares. Angelique, thank you for those kind words. I've been blessed by your friendship, your guidance, and just continue to be a force of good and continue to uplift those around you. Hope to see you soon. Melvin James says, good luck, Mike. Thank you, Melvin. If we ever see each other, please stop me in the street. You know who that is? No. Oh, no, no, neither no. do I. I, I don't. Mike, you had an uphill battle. There was a lot of controversy when you were the city council president. Many say that you were railroaded. How do you feel about that? Well, you know what? Nothing good comes easy. You know, you know, from, you know, all my successes in life, there's, you know, failure has been not too far away in disappointment, be it graduating from college, going to law school, working for the CIA, and, you know, uh, you know, having the privilege and the honor to be a city council president. I recognize that I wasn't part of the political established plan. I literally came out of the woodwork. And then... Uh, my political existence is a threat 
to the establishment political existence. And if I wasn't uh, effective, I wouldn't be attacked. I wouldn't be harassed. I wouldn't be cyber bullied. Now, Ben, further, you said something earlier. You know, yes, I'm a public service, and it comes with the territory. But this systemic, concerted effort extended to my family, my children, my nieces, my nephews, my parents. These are women that are being harassed and bullied. And that's okay because their last name is Cater. That lets you know that we were doing or trying to do something good. I never promised excellence. Excuse me, I never promised perfection. I promised honesty and excellence and putting my best foot forward. And that's a promise that continues. Another question for Melvin. What did you do as a CPC, C, CP to address the political corruption in Yonkers? Well, one, thank you for that question, Melvin. You know, early on in the first term, I actually created a committee called Government Oversight and Operations. Similarly, in that first year, I created an enhanced whistleblower law. But just like with everything, it was sabotaged, it was railroaded, because they don't want true transparency. It should be noted that that government and oversight and operations, uh, excuse me, the government oversight operation has been eliminated. The council should be ashamed of themselves. So Melvin, contact your council person and ask them why was this committee that has a noble and just reason uh, to be created eliminated. Particularly, they all supported it. They all supported its creation. Uh, concern uh, Yonkers Democrats again. Guys, remember that we want questions from everyone, so I might not ask every single question that you pose because we want to address all the questions. Uh, the concern Yonkers Democrats ask, is there still an investigation into Mr. Kader's conduct as a city council president? Uh, thank you, concerned. Uh, 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 Liam's politically motivated inquiry into me is still pending. You know, you would probably have more information about it than myself. We heard about, uh, it's public record, that uh, you are suing the city of Yonkers, Correct. Mayor Mike Spano, and many others. But uh, there are certain things that are not clear. Is this one case? Is this multiple cases? Do you care to elaborate? I know this is ongoing case, sometimes it's not proper too, but I ask the questions and you answer in whatever way you think it's best. Well, yeah, well, there's one. You know, I believe it was uh, concerned Yonkers just uh, asked the question. That Liam uh, uh, looking into me is not a case. It's something that's internal. So there's no pending case on that. You are correct. Uh, last two, about two weeks ago, I did start a, a court action that's pending. And yeah, I'm not going to try that case on social media or in the streets. You know, it'll be tried during discovery and sworn depositions, and the court of law will decide. There is another case with, uh, you know, that hasn't been filed yet, but it's forthcoming. But uh, is uh, the mayor being sued personally, or is the city of Yonkers being sued? In this case, it was uh, a defamation. There's four or five causes of action. It's a public document. Exactly. Right? I, mean, I saw and, it. And, and anyone could go and get it. You know, in the case that's forthcoming, there'll be more named defendants. Now, uh, are you at liberty of uh, elaborating on essence? I read the complaint, okay? Talks about pr uh, property, rezoning, and a whole bunch of other things. Can you elaborate on that, on that or you prefer not to at this point? You know, Ben, it's not that I don't want to elaborate. I think to to maintain the integrity of the lawsuit and to create uh, impartiality, it's best that it takes its course. Civil litigation is a long process, and we are in the infancy stages of this process. And 
I'm, con I'm pretty certain the defendants are going to do everything in their power to dismiss this case, to pivot on what the real issues are, but that's what discovery and sworn testimony is all about. Let's move into something else. Now, uh, let's talk about the threat that you might be posing and the reason that might be why they don't want uh, Mike Cater involved, part of the government. What do you think it is? Are you uh, a stone in the shoe that uh, blocks certain things from happening and they want you out? In your assumption, in your, uh, you are an intelligent man. You are an attorney. Depends who you ask. Okay, <laughs> you are an attorney. You work for the CIA. In the, in, you were involved with intelligence. So I'm sure that you have made. You have an idea of why. You, you, you know, Ben. I do have several ideas. I just want to say, early on, I was undermined. And by the time I recognized it, you know, the ship already uh, sailed. But you use the word block. And even when I didn't support legislation, I never blocked it. It was important that it comes up to a vote. Many times if something was complicated, okay, let's slow it down. We don't need to do things at the 11th hour. But I never blocked something. I didn't like something. I voted no. And usually I put a reason out there that people understand. And on the flip side, if I supported something, I would put a reason out there. I think by blocking legislation is mean-spirited. You're undermining your, your purpose as a legislator to create laws in the city of Yonkers. And every council person should be held accountable and either defend their yes vote or show support for their no vote or vice versa. Now, look, I, I tell people all the time that politics is not my thing. Okay, I really don't like politics. Neither do I. Okay, I, 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 Mike, not liking politics is an understatement. I hate politics. But sometimes I do interview political figures, elected officials, because I feel that the people of Yonkers need to hear from them. Okay, that, that it needs to be a bridge between people who we elected for office and the people who voted for them for those offices. Until Yonkers Voice came into play, into play, there was no bridge. We saw you guys when you wanted to be elected, and then we saw you guys again when you ran for re-election. So there was no connection between electing and re-election. People could not connect. People could not reach. Uh, I hear a lot of complaints. Oh, I called. They didn't call me back. I emailed. They didn't email me back. So there was no connection. The purpose of Yonkers Voice is to create that bridge between political figures, law enforcement, and the people they serve, the people you serve. So now we have a connection. People can jump in here and they can ask you or the mayor or council person a question in real time. Well, that's a trend that we created, as you said, exactly. in, in the opening. But it, it should also be noted, I even, and I recognize that and I agree with that. You know, most people, unfortunately, don't even know who the council person is or, or how the council functions or when they meet and what's the difference between a rules meeting and a committee meeting and a city council meeting. You know, it, it, it's dry, it's boring, and it's easily, it's easy to fall asleep while you're trying to learn on these issues. But also, that's one of the first things I do recall is, you know, I, I introduced something to go Facebook Live. And again, very similar to, you know, when we did our live, you know, you don't know what to expect, but... Um, the, by the way, did you ever receive that invoice for that idea? Because, because that was... Ben, you know what, it, it should, you know what, you, sh you, you should have been a co-sponsor on that because the idea came from you. And, but you know what, when you listen to the residents of Yonkers, including yourself, you know, and you put an idea in writing and it came forward. And I think, you know, obviously certain council members had a reservation because, you know, they couldn't fall asleep or they couldn't, you know, they're going to be seen texting. And uh, I think it's a success and it's still ongoing. I believe. It's still ongoing. Uh, you know, Mike, it's, it's important to talk to the people before the election, when you elected, and after you elected. It's important, extremely important to keep in contact with the people. And also very important to speak with the people at their level. Look, me, if I have to vote for someone, 
I vote to the, for that person based on can I connect with that person? Can I relate to that person? Does that person understand my problems? And my problems are not always that compli complicated uh, education formula, budgets, this and that. Maybe the general public don't understand those things, but they understand quality of life. Well, well you know, Ben, again, uh, you know, your comment raises a lot of things. You know, most people are disgusted with elected officials, you know, just by design. You know, when you look at, you know, I don't care what you listen to, if it's Fox, MSN, or, uh, you know, CNN, you know, at the state level, county level, you know, there's just a negative inclination about being an elected. And look how divided we are in our country. You know, uh, you know somebody says, why are you wearing a purple tie? You know, and it's very easy. When you combine red and blue, you become purple. And it's important that we elect people that make decisions on their values. Your values aren't shaped during a campaign cycle. Your values aren't shaped during a fundraiser. Your values are shaped in your upbringing, your morals, what you generally believe in. And there's nothing wrong in shifting or evolving on an issue. You know, reality is, Ben, we live in a very complicated city. We're the third largest city now you know, 220 or 230, you know, probably more that, uh, you know, you know, we have residents that are not documented. So I believe the number is even higher. Got to remember, this census was done during a pandemic. So people were hesitant to opening the door. But that going said, you have a lot of issues and you have a lot of concerns. So you, while you're not going to make everyone happy at every decision, but if you elect officials where you know their values, and you know what they believe in, you'll be okay. Unfortunately, what happens is the standard is so low to get elected in the city council, and the city council really doesn't really have the resources. It's designed to be a part-time job with one aid. You know, so while it's a title, and you, but yet it's a title, and yet you vote on a 1.2, 1.3 billion dollar budget. It's almost one-sided. So. Residents need to ask, not what's your position on this or how do you feel about that, and hold people accountable. And unfortunately, that doesn't happen. Where you have a machine that holds on to power, they play a divide and conquer. A lot of residents play identity politics, and they feed into that. Then you get infighting. You have it in the Arab community, which is by design. You have it in the Spanish community, the Latinx community, and the people in power love division. That's not by accident. You know, you give people a key pro you know, you give them a proclamation, you give somebody a job, you know, buy somebody a steak dinner, and you you sow rift. And that's what happens here. You know, Mike, as we go live, sometimes there is a little delay in transmission. We might be on a different subject, and then all of a sudden a question from the prior subject comes up. Uh, Lorraine Lopez asks this, and I want to make sure I ask the question so you can clarify. She said, good afternoon, guys. Did Mike Cater just say that there will be another lawsuit coming? If so, against whom? Uh, hi, Lorraine. Hope you're doing well. It's been a while. Um, yes, I did say that. It wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't a glitch. You know, you know, uh, there'll be another lawsuit, and you know, I'm going to defer on that. But, uh, you know, once it be made public, I'm sure, you know, uh, pages such as Yanka's Voice will put it out there. We will definitely broadcast it. Mike, as with everything in life, you know, people are saying that the, the voice is a little low, so maybe we need just to talk a little louder. I'll talk like, you know, James Earl Jones. That's it. Use the force. <laughs> Mike, you know, with, my voice. this is not just in regards to politics. It's about life, okay? In anything that we do in life, sometimes after the fact, we say, mm, I could have done this better, I could have done this this way, I could have done that way. Uh, and in politics, it's no different. Correct. Okay? We can always learn from the mistakes that we have done. We can always learn, you know, say, look, I could have done this in a different way. Is there anything that you learn from the time that you were a uh, Yonka City Council President, that you say, well, maybe I should have addressed it in a different way. If this was to happen today, and I was still the city 
council president, I would have done it differently. Anything that you care to talk about? Yes, you know, uh, you know, every day you learn, every day you put, you know, your best foot forward, and you know, there's that saying, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah, I heard you that. Know, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking, shoulda, woulda, coulda. You know, then I think most people know I was a political newcomer, and uh, I didn't know politics. You know, and that was something I was never shy of. You know, and it's almost. There's a French philosopher, I'm going to use this analogy. There's a French philosopher once said, if someone explains to you Middle East politics and it makes sense, that means it was explained wrong. You could use that same logic and that same line to Yonkers. If somebody explains to you Yonkers politics and it makes sense, that means it was explained wrong. So Ben, you know, I think one of uh, the errors, you know, I was, you know, I always there, you know, blood is thicker than water, and you know, I thought there were people out there that had my best interest at heart. And by the time I recognized that, you know, it was too late. My errors, I generally feel, were not in my values and my beliefs and legislation I supported. I I believe that uh, my errors were in me being politically naive. And by the time that it came to fruition it was too late. I generally, you know, you're not going to get every vote right. You know, in, in an average day, you know, between, you know, a husband, a father, a law practice, clients, hundreds of decisions, thousands of decisions a day. So you're not going to get all of them right. But, uh, you know, having that political inexperience was something that, you know, jumps out. Now, Mike, I have to bring something up, and I believe you were victim of it as well, cyberbullying, okay? I remember back when you were uh, in the election for re-election, uh, and before, there were a lots of cyberbullying against you. Your family were mentioned. Uh, how do you feel about cyberbullying, and do you think that it's time that some type of legislation it's put in place to address this issue. You, you, you know, Ben, um, we've been talking on about 15 minutes or something, and, and that was the first question that really gave me a feeling. As being the candidate, as being in office, my cater on the ballot, unfortunately, sometimes it comes with the territory, but to see your wife, your family being harassed, the constant harassment, intimidation, the thinly worded veils of threats, the manipulation, it'll take a toll on anyone. I'm comfortable to say I don't know one person that ever ran that went through what me and my family went through. And this was designed. This wasn't something that came up at the 11th hour. It was concerted. You had master manipulators and deep pockets to fund this. The damage that it caused takes time. And that was one of the main reasons after assessing the hurt with my family, I needed time pause, reassess, and focus on my family. Make, it, make sure that they're okay. Because I asked for this to be on the ballot, not them. But bullies, they don't care. They find your weakness and they try to expose it. But more importantly, there's a psychological act aspect of it. You know, you have a lot of political operatives that believe in Machiavelli and it's better to be feared than loved and all these kind of art of war mumbo jumbo. And you have to recognize your actions have consequences. And one of the first parts is recognizing, forgiving, I forgive you. And probably for some selfish reasons. You can't put your best foot forward if you're carrying a grudge. I'm in such a better place by forgiving them because 
when you're dealing with career establishment, career operatives, career politicians, this is a business transaction. Livelihood, jobs, millions of dollars are on the line. Now, with that said, Mike, I, I'm not going to mention the name and I don't care to mention the name, but most people know or most people think okay, that a particular blogger is doing exactly that and acting as a Cater's family's mouth. Okay? He's stalking, harassing, intimidating multiple people, including myself. Okay? Why, if you feel the way you feel, why not distance yourself from this particular person? Because I've seen it, you know it, your brother knows it, who, the, who I'm talking about, but no one has the courage to come up and say, listen, he's not speaking on my behalf. And is, this particular person is creating an optical illusion that he is. He, he, he talks about everybody else. He harasses about everyone else in Yonkers, political figures, private people, but the caters. And none of the caters come in public and say, you know what? He does not speak on my behalf. I have, I'm making it known to the people of Yonkers that he has nothing to do with me. Why not do exactly what you just said? If you feel that uh, cyberbullying is wrong, why allow somebody to create the illusion that they're speaking on your, on your family's behalf, your interests, and uh, not stop it? Well, Ben, when I did receive... We're not going to mention the name, but no, we, no, all, I, we all know who know, I'm talking about. I know exactly who you're referring to, so, so there's no confusion. Ben, I received, you know, a uh, few months, you know, you know, calls and text messages, you know, with this assumption, you know what they say about assuming, right, as out of you and me, uh, that, you know, I was behind this. Actually, there was even another page that came up, Yonkers Corruption. God, Which is him. You know, Which is him. Ben, but let me answer, please. It's important. You know, and, you know, people assume it's me. If I have something to say, who's going to say it? You know, even when we postponed our meeting, right, I sent you a message. I'm not going to hide behind uh, a fake page or a fake profile. If I have a message to give, I'm going to give it, and I think I've proven that. Number two, no one's ever asked me publicly, like what you just did, and it's fine. You know, I think you asked about paying or stuff like that. I never paid any page or any blogger, right? You can't keep it broader than that to speak on my behalf. I think I'm articulate enough. Uh, I have the issues enough. I, I'm familiar with the issues. Well, I could articulate on my on my own behalf. If there's, like you said, the cyberbullying and stalking and all these other, it's improper. It shouldn't happen. No one should be doing that. There, you know, under certain elements, they're crimes. It shouldn't be happening, and it should stop. So you know who I'm talking about. Is this person... Based on the description, yes, I do. So does this person... I'm going to ask you a direct question. Do you or any member of your family has any contact with him? I'm talking about professional contact. And he's allowed to speak on your behalf or on behalf of your interests? Or is he doing that on his own to create an illusion that does not exist? The only person that's allowed to talk on my behalf are my lawyers and my wife. You know, I mean, that, I, I can't put it some person. So there. maybe I should ask your wife <laughs> if uh, she authorized this person to speak on the Cadiz no family? No, no one. I have never authorized anyone. I have spoken to him the way I would, uh, I, I would speak to you. And I actually, uh, a couple of times, said, listen, I'll speak to you and I'll be going on his show. And this issue is going to be dealt with, all, I mean, addressed when I say dealt with. Okay. Because you do understand that the illusion and the projection is actually not helping. It's hurting. Ben, you know what? Because you're not distancing yourself from him. Ben, distance self how? You asked me right now. This is the no, first no, time. you no, did. No, 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 Ben, this is the first time publicly you asked it. I looked the camera right in the eye. I didn't pivot. If you felt I pivot, tell me because I'll be even more clear than I was. You, you know, we talked about dollars. Uh, never paid anyone, Yonkers Voice included, or any other blogger. I never authorized anyone to speak on my If there's an issue. I know how to articulate it. When I don't speak, it's for a reason. When I do speak, it's for a reason. And when I do go on, so this issue will be dealt with, you know, and addressed. Well, I had to ask the question because I want to make it clear for the people that are watching because lots of people are under that impression. Well, you know, I mean, you, 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 you could say that um, 
while assuming that what you're saying are harassment or, or you know breaking laws, no, I, I don't support or condone any breaking of any penal law or any misdemeanors or harassment or violations. I've been a victim of it, so I know how it feels to be harassed. I know how it feels when bullying hits home. So I wouldn't wish it on my anyone. Now, Mike, is there anything else that uh, may be? Because sometimes I have a list of questions to go on, but as we, the conversation evolves, sometimes you forget here and there. Is there anything that it's important that you would like to, to bring up to talk about it? You know, Ben, you know, there, there, there's always so many things to go. We, yes. Unfortunately, you know, we, we don't have uh, all day. Huh? Yeah, we don't have all day. But, you know, you know, just because you don't see me, I'm around. You know, you know, I still visit the small businesses. I still visit the bodegas and the small restaurants. And, you know, I'm in constant contact with my supporters and, and, my, and my friends in labor. And, you know, if you ever need a lawyer, you know, shameless plug. I'm right here, 733 Yonkers Avenue. You know, you could follow me at Cater Law. My website's caterlaw.com. My office number is 914-963-5529. I guess I'm going to have to charge you after all for this interview. You just asked me, did I ever pay anyone? <laughs> <laughs> just joking, guys, just joking. Yeah. Mike, I know that there's lots of people out there that appreciate the work that you did. There is a lots of people out there that support your lawsuit. There is others that don't, but that's life. It's expected. <laughs> it's expected. Well, I wish you the best in whatever you know your f future brings you. Uh, and uh, I guess we conclude our, our interview, unless there is something else that you want to bring up that I forgot. You know, Ben, you know, it's, it's just in, in closing, you know, as always, to, to your followers, thank you for being true, being gritty, always giving it to me honest. You know, if you're a real account or a fake account, I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I will continue to try to uplift those around me, put my best foot forward, and be a leader that governs on values and morals. Thank so, you so much for having me. Ben. So once again, I'm going to make it clear that on Yonkers Voice, I'm not too concerned with the fake profiles, because sometimes I understand that you create those fake profiles because maybe your work, you, don't, you cannot express your opinion on your real profile for whatever reasons, retaliation or whatever. I understand that and we allow that. What I don't allow is creating fake profiles on the purpose of harassing others. So if you have a, a fake profile that the only reason why you created it is to harass, disrespect, stalk, and do whatever things that you would not do with your real profile, I will remove you from the page. Say whatever you want. It's my page. It's my party. I do whatever I want on it. Just so if you want to stay on it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that, <laughs> I just laid the smack down. <laughs> that's it. If you enjoy the page, if you like the page, engage by all means, but do it in a politely and respectful way. That's all that I ask. Thank you for watching. Feel free to share this, uh, this view. And listen, guy, don't forget to share, especially the part that I ask. You know what? Thank you. Until next time, Mr. Cater. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate it always. Peace out, Yankers. What's familiar? Ciao.